once upon a time, two young Presbyterian missionaries felt called of God to travel to a distant location in Africa and there put up a mission where they could proclaim the gospel to a local native tribe. Well, they made all the arrangements. They got together with the PCUSA Board of Missions and made all the calls, made all the arrangements, filled out all the forms, gathered all the supplies. And they flew to this nation. And as they got off the bus, they met with the authorities there and they said, well, look, you're going to a very dangerous location and you're going to need to buy weapons, uh, wild animals everywhere, you need to buy weapons and a hunting permit. Okay. Also, the road you're on is long, twisty, streams go through it, sometimes it's washed out, you might get lost. Frequently that happens. We have teams that go out and seek lost people on these roads, so if you do get lost, it's dark, fire shot, and we'll be there to rescue you. If that doesn't happen within a half hour, fire another shot, and so forth. Well, they're traveling along the bumpy road, and sure enough, it got dark, and sure enough, they got lost. And so the one guy says, we need to fire a shot. So they fired a shot. Nobody came. They waited a half hour, and they fired a shot again. Nobody came. They waited another half hour, did the same thing. Nobody came. They did this all night until it was almost morning. And at that point, the one says to the other, you know, if we're not found soon, we're going to run out of arrows. <laughs> Long way to go for a lame punchline. <laughs> Sometimes, living out God's call for our lives can be difficult and scary. Sometimes, we may find that we're in a deep, dark, dangerous place and we've run out of arrows. I think this is true, maybe, especially at Christmas time. God uses this season to inspire us and to draw us closer to him in so many ways. And this year, just maybe, God is calling you to do something a lot different to draw yourself and to draw others to him. God may be calling you to do something new this Advent season that perhaps you have never done before. What he calls us to do may be complicated, extensive. It may be relatively simple. His call may involve building up our faith. It may involve our reaching out to another. It may involve our commitment to do new things for the kingdom. If so, if, if God wanted to, us to do something new at Christmas, how would he get through to us? How would he call us? How would he motivate us to accept his call? To find out, since we've been studying the book of Jeremiah, and I've waited this long to get to chapter 1, let's take a look at chapter 1 of Jeremiah. Jeremiah was born into a family of priests, and he lived in a small town north of Jerusalem called Anatote. This is an historic village made up of historic priestly families. Jeremiah was probably 12 or 13. He was a young teen when God called him. And it's probable that when he was called, he expected God to call him to be a priest. That was what he was used to. That was what, familiar was, uh, what he was familiar with. He saw his dad do it. He saw his grandfather do it. That would be a comfortable job. That would be a complacent job. It would allow him to live safely there in Anatoth. But God had other plans. His call on Jeremiah's life would not send him to a safe place, but to a very dangerous and uncomfortable place, to Jerusalem, in the midst of the politics in Jerusalem. And not as a respected wealthy priest, but as a poor and despised prophet. Sometimes God calls us to try out new things, to go in new directions we haven't done before, and to do things we haven't considered before. And maybe, just maybe, God is calling you to do something like this at Christmas. This Christmas and perhaps into 2017. So how would you know this? How would you know if God is calling you to do something new? Well, let's take a look at what God did with Jeremiah. We read about Jeremiah's call in our text for today. 
And the story of his call sounds an awful lot like the accounts of just about every other prophet's call in the Old Testament. We read about the call of Moses in Exodus 3, the call of Isaiah in Isaiah 6, the call of an unnamed prophet in Isaiah 40, and so forth. Even the call of Paul on the road to Damascus in the book of Acts reads in a similar way. These accounts of God's calling all sound the same. So it would appear that in Jeremiah chapter 1, we have a blueprint for every prophet and every believer's call. It is a template for us all. Do you want to know if you've been called by God? Take a look at Jeremiah 1. The first thing God does when he calls us is that we hear God's voice breaking into our existence, calling us to do his work. We read this in verses 4 and 5. Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, before I ever made you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I decided to make you great. I have appointed you as a prophet to the nations. The word of God, the creative force of God in the world, in the New Testament, this is called the Spirit of God. This breaks into Jeremiah's consciousness somehow, some way, and tells him that God has a purpose for his life, a purpose he has figured out before he was ever born. And that purpose is the job for which God commissions Jeremiah. He is to be a prophet to the nations. The old nation of northern Israel that at that time was defunct, but the refugees were still around, and the nation he was born in, the nation of Judah. To these peoples, Jeremiah is going to go and do God's work. Now, we're not told any details of how God heard God, uh, Jeremiah heard God's voice. God's call may be direct and clear. It may be subtle and require some soul searching. It might come to us as a movement of our mind, a feeling in our gut, a thought flashing across our mind, something suggested by a parent, a friend, a pastor, or a Bible passage. It might be a need that we have identified that we are motivated and compelled to respond to, a direction that we find ourselves already moving in, an open door, a call by someone on the church committee asking for our help, or even the words and expressions of a beloved child asking us a simple question. Everybody's different. But like Jeremiah, it is God who has created us and who knows how to claim us. And so to get through to us, God's call comes in various ways. We may not be sure of how it will come, but one thing is clear. When God's voice is heard, it not only calls us to do something, it convinces us and reassures us that the voice we are hearing is in fact the voice of God and not the voice of our ego or something else we've heard or somebody else's wishes. When God's call comes to us, it creates certainty within our hearts. Don't ever worry about the voice you may be hearing. Only the voice of God will be effective. It is God who speaks to you, if it is God who speaks to you in whatever form, his word that he speaks will do its work. His word will convince you. His word will claim you. His word will not return void, just like it claimed Jeremiah. But what about our response to God's call when he calls us? Take a look at Jeremiah's response. Verse tells us his response. Ah, and that should be uh, an exclamation point. Oh, Lord, look, I don't know how to speak. I'm just a kid. I'm only a youth. I'm a young teenager. But God, you don't understand. This won't work. I'm too young. The elders of land will give me no respect. I have no formal training. I'm a priest, not a prophet. No one's going to listen to me. I don't have those gifts. I don't have the time. Call somebody else. God's word, his calls, claimed Jeremiah. But Jeremiah was not going to go. What amazes me about every account of a prophet's call is that the prophet always says no. At least at first. Moses didn't want to answer God's call. Isaiah didn't. Jonah didn't. Probably Paul wrestled with it too. When God calls, we are always full of excuses. 
We're not prominent enough. We don't have the abilities. We're not worthy enough. People will oppose us. Our faith is not strong. I'm just a youth. I don't have the time anymore. We did that last year and it was a disaster. I've never done that before. I don't think I'd be any good at that. We just don't have the money. We don't have the transportation, the energy, the training. It's too much hassle. I don't want to stick my head out. We've done that all our lives and now it's time for the young people to take over. We're young and we have kids and it's too much hassle to help others. Lord, I'm just a youth. Please call somebody else. God has heard all these excuses and doubts a million times before. But the fact that the accounts of God's call always contain doubts and excuses should tell us something. It tells us that no one who is really called of God ever really wants to be called. The one who is truly called sees the cost and knows that the cost of doing what God has called them to do could be very great. It might mean giving up a lot of free time. It might mean reaching out to folks we don't know or even like. It might mean giving up that new TV media system we've always wanted for Christmas. It might mean not giving all those costly gifts our kids know they want under the tree this year. It might even mean giving up our very lives, which is what Jesus did at Christmas, to fulfill God's call in his life. Let's face it. In our worst moments, all of us can be downright lazy, complacent, and resistant. We like our free time. We like our space. We live in a culture that tries to seduce us always away from any thought of self-sacrifice for others. So often when God calls, our first response is, Don't bother me now, Lord. The Steeler game is on. Can't you call somebody else? How does God deal with our resistance when he calls? In verses 7 and 9, we read what God did to convince Jeremiah to stop doubting and to fully accept his call. The Lord said to Jeremiah, don't say you're just a youth. I will direct you to go where I want you to go, and I will tell you to say what you need to say. See, I have put my very word in your mouth. Don't be afraid of your task, for I will be with you. You know, God never gives up on complacent doubters like us. Regardless of our attitudes, he still loves us, and he loves us enough to break through all of our excuses, doubts, and rationalizations. For Jeremiah, God meets his doubts of being inexperienced and untrained. God gives him the certain knowledge of his direction. He arms him with the very word of God in his mind. Now Jeremiah has all that he needs to fulfill God's call. God has taken away all of his excuses. When God calls us, he does the same. He will take away our excuses. He will constantly motivate us to respond. He may show us how great the need is. He may move us by breaking down our complacency with his love. He may make us feel a bit guilty. He may compel, compel us to accept his call. He doesn't twist our arms or beat us over the head. But somehow, some way, he gets through to us. His call will take away all our excuses will create a willingness on our part to finally fully accept it. And finally, for Jeremiah, God recommissions him for his call and his doubts. His doubts are answered. And in that recommissioning, God gives Jeremiah a vision of what he has called him to do. In verse 10, we read, I have appointed you this day over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up, to break down, to destroy, and to overthrow, to build, and to plant. For Jeremiah, this vision is all-encompassing. It has two parts to it. He was to rid the community of all those influences that took people away from following God's covenant, to pluck up and to overthrow. And then once the dust cleared, he was to set up positive influences and forces that served to build for a new existence, to plant and to build. When God calls us, we begin to think about his call, he will give us a vision of what he wants us to do to pluck up and break down what hinders God's work in the world and in our lives, and to build and plan for the future of God's kingdom in the world and in our lives. So how do you know if God's calling you to do something this Christmas? If you've heard the voice of God calling you, and if you don't want to go, and if you've doubted whether you can carry through with that call, if this has happened to you, guess what? You've been called by God, even if you don't want to go. 
So what kind of different things could God be calling you to do this Christmas? I would suggest that God might be calling each of us to do one of four things that are new this time of year. Number one, draw close to God. Maybe your prayer life is not what it used to be. Maybe you need to turn off the computer, the computer or your smartphone and spend more time alone with God. Maybe there are some things in your life that he wants to show you. Maybe you have distanced yourself from him with all the plans, the celebrations and family meals and gift giving, gift giving that are coming up. Maybe because of Christmas, you are in danger of missing the real Christmas. Maybe God's call for you right now is to slow down and talk to him more. Two, maybe God is calling you to do something significant for somebody else. Maybe you are so much in your comfort zone with this Christmas season that you have fallen into a self-centered cycle of only serving yourself and your family. Maybe God wants to challenge you with a stronger faith, a faith that puts others above yourself and your own affairs. Maybe you need to accept that invitation when our nominating committee calls you and asks you if you will serve this church in 2017. Maybe that soup kitchen in Ambridge or Aliquippa needs another helping hand on Christmas Day. Maybe the whole family can get involved. Maybe when you are shopping at Toys R Us for your own kids and a, a retired Marine comes up to you and asks you to buy some toys for underprivileged children. They do that every year, you know. Maybe you will take back what you bought for your own just to have something to give to a kid that's getting nothing. Do something significant for somebody else this Christmas. Three, don't let past regrets or present depression take away your Christmas. You may be spending your first Christmas without that one you've always enjoyed spending Christmas with. The holidays this year might be a real downer because of this. Maybe you have regrets of what has happened in your life this past year and before then. Maybe you just want to sit down and do nothing. Don't let your depression or your regret get the better of you this Christmas. Reach out to others. Don't stay at home and mope. Draw closer to God. Make an appointment with a trained counselor. Call a friend. Get involved somewhere else so that with your new experience you'll have a new perspective on life. Let God make you just as excited about this year's Christmas as you were when you were a kid years ago. Fourthly, Reach out to another you know, who you haven't seen in a while, perhaps you're estranged with. Maybe this is a friend or family member. Maybe it's your ailing next door neighbor. Maybe you need to go to them and ask if you can help with a project. Maybe you need to be reconciled with them. Maybe you need to go and work out some hard feelings between them and you. Maybe you need to apologize even if you don't think you need to. Maybe your relationship is past mending. Maybe it's not. As you know, God likes to create miracles at Christmas time. Maybe this year, God is taking you, calling you to take on more responsibility with the affairs of others around you. There may be something entirely different of the other than these four that God is calling you to do. I don't know. Those are some suggestions. But when God calls, know what will happen. At first you will say what folks always say, no, God, sorry, I don't have the time. I don't have the money. I don't have the energy. I don't have the courage. I'm fine just the way I am. Please call somebody else. You know, when you tell God to call somebody else, there never is somebody else. What he wants you to do is what he has planned only for you to do. Anyone else is not the same. They might be better at it, but that's not God's plan. For one reason or another, he wants you to do what he calls you to do. His call is just for you and you alone. And if you don't go, then God's work in this world will become a little less effective. And you and others will miss a great opportunity to grow in his grace this Christmas. Don't spend this Christmas season just sitting on the couch watching football games or escaping to your kitchen to get lost and cooking stuff for everybody else. This season, 
God, I believe, has some important things for you to do. Perhaps some new things for you to do. Listen for God's call. And when you accept it, and when you get over all the no's and all the excuses, this Christmas will become for you a special time. A special time you have not experienced in a long, long while. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.